Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Talk It Up with Tierra Monique. I am your girl. I am she. I am here. Tierra Monique. It's been a minute. I hope everyone is enjoying their summer. It's August, so happy August to you. Um, I know kids are in school, some in parts, some parts of the country. Um, mine are not. <laughs> not yet. Not till next month. Um, but I hope you're enjoying your summer. I have been enjoying my summer. I've been up and down with some things, but I'm back. I'm here. And I'm not going to allow any of that stuff that happened in July <laughs> keep me from doing what God told me to do. Um, so if you are listening to this, guess what? I'm on YouTube now. So I have my whole YouTube channel and I'm getting it together. And you can head over to Talk It Up with Tierra Monique on my YouTube channel. And I hope you um, enjoy the, the video as well as um, the audio. Um, thank you so much for joining me again. I'm, I'm taking a leap. I'm recording this. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone and only be um, behind the camera. So, you know, <laughs> it's a learning experience. So I'm doing it no matter what, right? Right. All right. So um, happy Friday. I hope you all are having a fantastic Friday. Um, if you're not listening to this on a Friday, I hope you're having a fantastic, wonderful, marvelous, supernatural, miracle, um, experiencing day. Um, and if you're not having any of that kind of day, um, I pray that the day turns around for you. I pray that anything I say today will uplift you and encourage you and motivate you to be your best self and live your best lives. And, um, and yeah, that, that's it. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time, joining me. Um, my name is Tierra Monique and my whole purpose of this podcast is to encourage you and motivate you to be your best self and all, also for you to learn um, a lesson or two from my own experiences. I've gone through a lot. Um, some things that I did not um, put on myself and there are things that I did put on myself and so I want you to not go through those things and if you are going through them, grew through them, just know that you are not alone. And that's what I want my story to be, is that I am helping people through my life experiences um, to live their best lives. Okay? All right. So with all that being said, welcome. It's episode 65 and we're live. <laughs> I am a little quirky, I'm a little corny, but hey, that's all I mean. I love it. Um, uh, today's um, of the podcast is What's Love? got to do with it. Y'all know that song? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Oh yeah, I forgot to bring my intro music in. Let's see, let's see if Alexa can help us. Alexa, play What's Love Got to Do With It. Here's What's Love Got to Do With It, 2015 remastered version by Tina Turner on Amazon Music. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here we go. I'm only gonna give you a snippet because I'm not sure if uh, YouTube will pull this down. But hey, what's love got to do with it? It's episode 65. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. But um, my notes just dropped. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna try to get it and then get back up here. Maybe I can pause my video without cutting it off because I've already recorded a part of this before and my video stopped because I pressed stop instead of pressing the <laughs> instead of pressing pause. So I'm gonna pause my audio first and I'm gonna pause this video next. Please don't stop on my video. Hey y'all, I did it. <laughs> It might not look like I didn't do anything uh, with the video because it's going to be all together, but I got down and got it. <laughs> my notes fell down and um, yeah, hey, look, it's, it's, it's my first time back. I'm getting back in the groove of things. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's what's love got to do with it? I watched the Tina Turner um, uh, documentary on HBO Max and it's was very telling um it was very motivational it was very inspiring and it was sad um if you didn't know tina turner's story up until the i tina documentary you you know now and if you haven't watched it please go watch it 
go over a friend's house if you don't have HBO Max to watch it because um, it you need to watch it. it. It was very, very, very moving and it was very telling. And um, I appreciate Tina Turner for, for being able to share her story with us to help other people. So with that being said, welcome back. Happy August and happy Friday. And if you're listening to this and it's not Friday in your neck of the woods, I hope, <laughs> I hope that um, you're having a great day no matter what day of the week it is. And I pray that God is blessing you and keeping you and protecting you from all harm and danger, including the COVID. Don't forget to wear your mask. Mask it up. We don't want no COVID. We don't want no Delta variant and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. So um, let's pray. If this is your first time listening to this podcast um, my goal is to inspire you encourage you and motivate you to live your best life and at the base of that is christ at the base of that is my faith i am a christian but i'm not a bible beater i'm not a judger i'm not coming to condemn anybody because let me tell you something if i if i could write a book which one day i am i, I am god i am i'm gonna write a book about all the things that i've gone through you like girl what <laughs> What girl, what? Uh, so, yes, um, that's the base of, of the podcast um, because I think God is in everything. Um, you can find God in everything. He may not uh, create a lot of the... He does not create the evil in the world, but in the evil, you can still find a lesson from God. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and pray, okay? Okay, so God, thank you for today. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for my listeners. Thank you, Lord God, for my viewers. Thank you, God, for my enemies. <laughs> um, help us today to know your love and to know that your love is greater than any other love that we could ever experience and that any other love that we do experience is just an extension of the love that you already gave to us. Help us to receive your love so we may also be able to give love back to ourselves and other people. Let us know that love has everything to do with what of, of how we live our lives and how we treat other people and how we treat ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So look, that wasn't too bad. You know, I didn't beat you over the head until you turned to a scripture. <laughs> okay. But um, we're going to go ahead and go to the first segment of today's podcast. And that's our Black Legacy Moment. Okay, so our Black Legacy moment is all about making sure that we still recognize and uplift um, and put a spotlight, basically, on those who came before us in the Black community. I am also Puerto Rican I, on my father's side, so I will also include um, things um, from my, that side as well um, because um, that's my makeup. So I am going to also include... Um, uh, that those type of uh, legacies and, and facts and information and history on my uh, Puerto Rican side. But today we're going to focus on black history and my black legacy moment, my black legacy, my black legacy moment person of the week is Tina Turner. Who else, right? Um, Tina Turner, um, as you all know, uh, was one of the most influential women um, to ever do it in, um, in the music business. Um, I'm going to read some facts from Wikipedia. All right. So, Tina Turner, born Anna Mae Bullock, which you may know. She was born November 26, 1939. She's an American-born Swiss singer, songwriter, and actress. She is widely referred to as the queen of rock and roll. She is regarded as one of the greatest music artists of the 20th century. Tina Turner rose to prominence as the lead singer of the Ike and Tina Turner Review, before launching successful career as a solo performer. Tina Turner began her career with Ike Turner and Kings of Rhythm in 1957 under the name of Lynn. She appeared on her first record, Box Top, in 1958. In 1960, she was introduced as Tina Turner with the hit single of Fool in Love. Y'all remember that song? You're just a fool, you know you're in love, what you say? <laughs> The duo went on to become one of the most formidable live acts in history. They released hits such as It's Gonna Work Out Fine, River Deep, Mountain High, the Grammy-winning Proud Mary, and Nutbush Sea Limits. 
before disbanding in 1906. Now, uh, for me, my all-time favorite Tina Turner song is Nut Boy City Limits. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yes. Remember, church house, hen house, mm -mm -mm -mm. school house, owl house, mm -mm. My ways on the night train. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The people keep the city clean. Mm -mm. They call it nut bush. <laughs> when she says nut bush, I get a kick. But yeah, I love that song. In the 1980s, Turner launched one of the greatest comebacks in music history. Which, by the way, on her documentary, she said it wasn't a comeback. She said she was finally showing people who she really was. Um, her 1984 multi-platinum album, Private Dancer, contained the hit song, What's Love Got to Do With It, which won the Grammy Award for the Record of the Year and became her first and only number one on the Billboard Hot 100, which doesn't really matter. At age 44, she was the oldest female solo artist to top the Hot 100. Come on now, 44. We, some of us give up before 40. Our life is over. That's a testimony right there. Her chart success continued with Better Be Good To Me, Private Dancer, We Don't Need Another Hero, Typical Male, The Best, I Don't Want to Fight, and Golden Eye. During her every, I'm sorry, her Break Every Rule World Tour in 1988, she set a then Guinness World Record for the largest paying audience of 180,000 people. Just imagine of performing to 180,000 people as a solo performer. She's also not only a singer, but she has starred in many films. She's been in Tommy, she's been in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, she was in The Last Action Hero, and in 1993, What's Love Got to Do With It? A biopic adapted from her autobiography, I, Tina, My Life Story, was released. In 2009, Turner retired after completing her Tina 50th anniversary tour, which is one of the highest grossing tours of all time. Tina Turner. What a life. She's still living, thank God. She's still here among us. She is still impacting our lives. She showed us that out of all the stuff that she gone through, that she had went through with Ike, with her family, with the betrayals, with the abuse, that you still can live out your purpose on this earth. So it's Tina Turner, Anna Mae Bullock, I salute you. You are our Black Legacy Moment Woman of the Week. Woo! Give it up for Tina Turner. <laughs> She is our Black Legacy Person of the Week. All right? All right. So, it is now our next segment. Story time. Cue the music. <laughs> I got to figure out how to, I'm going to be able to cue the music um, uh, on the video. I, got, I guess I got to get some kind of bing, 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 or something like that. I don't know. Because <laughs> when you listen to this on a podcast, it's going to break uh, audio. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm on a tangent. Here we go. <laughs> so my story time is um, love your kids to life. So we're talking about what's love got to do with it. And I say love has everything to do with everything. And when it comes to being a parent, I'm a mother of three. I have a 17-year-old son, a 12-year-old daughter, and a 5-year-old boy. Son. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and just recently, a couple days ago... Um, we were watching on the couch, me and my youngest son, and um, I try to always uh, get the kids to learn something new, learn something new, watch something new, listen to something new, because I don't want them to get in the habit of always doing the same thing um, just because it pleases them. I think that if you want to be a well-rounded person, you have to experience different things, different cultures. Um, different uh, mu music, just d different experiences. I think each experience will shape shape who you are and shape your life and make you more empathetic to other people and their cultures and all that good stuff. So with that being said, um, my youngest son, he wanted to watch this movie that's on Netflix um, called Vivo. And we watched it already. And so since he, we watched it, he wants to watch it every day. I know you have a child like that. Like they, they find something that they really like. They find a show, a movie, a song, 
and they want to watch all the time even you as adults you may find a song that you love and then you end up listening to it over and over and over again because you just want to keep on uh, feeling that feeling that you felt when you first heard it or first watched it well that's what happened with my son <laughs> So he's been listening to it, listening to it, and watching it, and watching it, and gone on YouTube and find all the YouTube clips with the songs, and the, that's all good stuff. So the other day, he wants, I said, you want to watch a movie together? And he said, yes. So we sat down on the couch and said, hey, let's find a movie. And so he said, I want to watch Vivo. And I said, how about we watch something else? We've watched that over and over again already. Let's find another movie that we haven't watched before. I haven't watched, and you haven't watched. Let's watch together. Oh, he didn't want to hear that. <laughs> he didn't want to hear any of that because he he wanted to watch Vivo. And it was what he knew. It was what he already knew. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knew um, the emotions he was going to feel. He already knew that he was going to be happy with watching Vivo. I apologize for talking too fast. Um, so I said, no, let's watch. Let's find another movie. So we go. I'm going through the list. He's all been out of shape. He's still sitting on the couch, but he don't want to talk to me. He tells me I'm not his friend anymore because I'm not letting him watch. I'm not letting him watch Vivo, which I I'll tell him all the time. I don't have to be your friend, but I'm still gonna be your mom, and you're still gonna respect me. Okay, okay. So um, I find another movie, and it's this dog movie. I think it was called Dog Be Gone, Dog Gone Home, or something like that. And we start watching it, and he's getting into it, but I can tell you, starting to get sleepy at the same time. Cause it was bedtime and um he's watching 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 it he ends up falling asleep but he was kind of into it before he fell asleep so the next day he gets up he grabs his kindle and he's at the table he's about to eat breakfast and he goes look mom he goes to netflix the netflix app on his kindle and he says look mom the movie we watched last night is on here. And I said, yes, it is. And he, and he said, I'm going to watch it. I said, okay. And he watched that movie from beginning to end. And he has watched that movie now over and over again. And so I'm glad that I introduced him to another movie. He did not want to watch it. But, but as a mom, we have to be able to tell our kids, not tell them, but encourage them to experience other things in life besides what they already know and I'm going to keep doing that because for a, a little bit sometimes we want to appease our kids we want we don't want to hear them whine and complain I don't wanna I don't wanna but if we stay persistent and we says you may not like it or it doesn't look appealing to you now but promise I promise you you're gonna like it and I knew he was gonna like it because it was one. It was an animated movie. It was a dog movie, which he likes dog movies, and I knew it was going to have a lot of action, you know, in it um, from from an animal aspect. So he enjoyed it, and now it's one of his one of the movies that he's watched over and over again since two days ago. <laughs> and so I said it to say, don't forget to um, encourage your kids to experience something else. You don't want to hear them nag and complain. You don't want to hear them whine. They may not like you for a little bit, but once they experience it, they're going to come back and they're going to say, you know what, I'm glad that you told me to, to do this. I'm glad you told me to go ahead and try out for this. I'm glad you, you told me to go ahead and take this class. I'm glad you, you told me to go ahead and step outside of my comfort zone and what's familiar to me and experience another part of my life because now I enjoy it and I'm glad that I've experienced it. Okay, all right, so that's story time, and I hope you got something from that. <laughs> all right, and so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get a word from our sponsors. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get the meat and potatoes of today's podcast. Okay? Okay. Add a flag. All right, so now we're back. Now, people who are watching, you didn't see nothing happen, <laughs> because I got to figure out how to put that in there, but... For my audio listeners, you just heard a great uh, sponsor <laughs> from Anchor.fm. And for people who are watching, um, Anchor.fm basically is a podcast um, distributor. They, um, It's an app. You can go on um, Anchor and you can record your podcast. They have tools and videos for you to listen to. and to li they, have, they have videos for you to listen to, for you to watch and listen to. 
that will help you to start your own podcast and tell your own story. And um, whether it's about life, whether it's about dogs, whether it's about sports, coffee, anything that you are passionate about and you want to talk about, they're going to help you to be able to do it. So that's what that was all about. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so what's love got to do with it? It's got everything to do with it, right? Right. So I got some things I want to talk about. And um, like I said, I watched the movie. Not the movie, I'm sorry. I watched the documentary. And what that documentary um, taught me, one, was not to give up. Um, I know that for a couple of years, I have been up and down about where I am in my life. And I'm 39 and I'll be 40 in December. And um, a couple of years ago, I did a podcast called um, Going on 40 or something like that. It was a whole other podcast about going on 40. And, I did, and in that podcast, I talked about how 40 is not my death sentence. I still have life after 40. I still can do what God wants me to do even before 40. And um, I slide. Pause. All right. So I watched the... Um, so I watched the documentary, and the documentary told me a lot of things. Excuse me, I had to pause. My son came in for cotton candy, and that's life. <laughs> it's just me and him here today. Um, and the documentary told me a lot of things about, like I was saying, that 40 is not a death sentence. And sometimes we put expectations in our head about what we, what, we, where we should be in life at a certain time of our life. And earlier when I, when I read um, Tina Turner's... Um, basics information about her we've we learned from the documentary and from from what i just told you that um 44 is when she came back per se and like i said she said that she didn't come back she didn't have a comeback she basically um not reinvented herself but represented herself to the world in the way that she wanted to because you know for so many years um she was basically Ike Turner's wife, you know, the lead sorry, lead singer of the Ike Turner Review. And even though people yelled her name, Tina Turner, Tina Turner, or Tina, 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 doing their concerts and their performances, she still was like underneath him as a person. And she never was able to sing the songs that she wanted to sing in the way she wanted to sing them. So not until she was 44 is when she she was able to re represent herself to the world. And that documentary shows that it took a while. If you watch the movie, the movie, What's Love Got to Do With It, that came out in, hold on, I wrote it down here. The movie came out October 2nd. No, the movie came out June 25th, 1993. The song came out October 2nd, 1991. Now, mind you, I was eight when the song came out. <laughs> and I was about uh, 11 years old when the movie came out um and the movie tells you you know it shows you how you know she left him she finally got the courage to leave him <clears throat> they had a whole fight she raced across the street she was being beaten up and then she um next thing you know she met uh, a manager or a music executive and he helped her uh come back in a sense, or represent herself to the world as not Tina Turner of, of the Ike Review, Ike Turner Review, but Tina Turner, the person who wanted to do, you know, rock and roll, not R&B. But there was a seven year time span that happened between the time she left Ike and the time she came back. Seven years. The movie shows you, oh, she left Ike, met somebody, and then she's in front of 180,000 people singing What's Love Got to Do With It. No, that's not what happened. Seven years. The documentary shows you that she was doing a performing in Las Vegas, San Francisco. She was performing all around at different um, venues, doing residencies to continue to keep up the momentum of who she was as Tina Turner. She fought for her name, she got her name, and now she wanted to show people that I'm not who you thought I was. I am me and I'm I'm who I'm I'm showing you who I am today. 
So I, I, I just want to say that because I don't have that in my notes, but seven years. So if you have gone through something and now you're trying to make a new life for yourself out from under the abuse, the, the pain, the brokenness, the being heartbroken, just know that sometimes the breakthrough or the new part that you want to show that you want to do, it's not going to happen overnight. Not like the movies and the TV shows and all the stuff they want to tell you is that it's an overnight thing. No, it took her seven years of dedication, of hard work, of doing those Las Vegas show reviews and San Francisco and wherever else she was to get back in the forefront for people to see her um, in a new light. Okay? Okay, so it's out of it anyway. <laughs> so, in my notes, I have a Tina Turner and other things have inspired today's episode, of course. So, I said that before. And um, what has inspired me from that is that, one, you know, what's love got to do with it? The love of fame and money calls the abuse. So, what's love, what's love got to do with it? Um, people view love many ways in many different ways um and the way that love the way that i show love to her um was through abuse and um he showed her that fame and greed was more important than who she was as a person and and loving her as a wife so that's one okay that's the kind of love that is shown to a lot of women and a lot of men and a lot of children is abuse, manipulation, deceitfulness, lies, dishonesty, infidelity, all that because of how someone else showed them love. So we don't really know Ike Turner's background. I don't know. I wouldn't say we. I know I don't know his full background. I don't know his, I don't know how he grew up. I haven't seen a documentary on him. I would love to know more information about him because I think that the way he treated her was from something else. I don't think that he initially wanted to do that i'm sorry i don't think i know because in the documentary <laughs> and please go watch it in the documentary i tina um they started off as friends not as love interests so i don't think that his initial um his his initial uh response to loving her was abuse and manipulation but it, it it ended up happening that way. It ended up playing out that way when he started he started not to get what he wanted, and when she started to be um, what the fans and what the other record labels wanted instead of him, and so he didn't like that. Okay, so the other love. Okay, so that was abusive love. Okay. The second love that was shown in that movie was the love of a wife to a husband made her stay. Her being a wife and her trying to show her, show him that she loved him and she didn't want to leave him the way other people left him um, was how she loved him. And it caused her to stay. So her love for her her love for him caused her to stay, and it caused her to stay too long. How many of us fall into a trap of loving someone to the point where it hurts us? Um, you love someone to the point where you don't even see yourself anymore when you look in the mirror. Everything about each and every day and every moment, every decision you make, all about how can you please them and show them love and it's all about showing them love the way they never receive love. Because you're trying to make up for all the other people who hurt them. So he had people leave him all the time. I had people, uh, he used to help people and because uh, he was very good at what he did in the music business. And he used to help people and write songs and produce for them. And then once they got on, once they got the fame or whatever, once they got put on, then they would leave. And so... He was trying to get her not to leave by beating her up. And she was trying to show him, hey, I'm not like everybody else by staying. And so, and then that kind of love towards him 
end up crippling her because she stayed longer than where she was supposed to stay. But there's a lesson in everything that, and I know that she learned her lesson even, even though she stayed, okay? So the third kind of love I saw and what's love got to do with it and through the I Tina documentary was the love um, of music, I'm sorry, the love of herself caused her to leave. So of course, he was loving her through abuse. Then she then in turn loved loved him to make up for all the people who hurt him. She's trying to make she's trying to she's trying to hold this, you know, hold on to this or carry this weight of other people hurting him by loving him. But then when she finally started to love herself, it caused her to leave. And that's something that we also need to learn from Tina is that when you wake up and you come to yourself and something, somebody, as we know in the movie, um, she was introduced to Buddhism and that gave her peace and that shown her her worth. And I, even though I'm a Christian, I do not say, well, how come she couldn't know Jesus? Let me tell you something. She found peace through Buddhism and I am not knocking it. It got her to the point where she is today. And I know I'm a Christian and you may come from me for that. Just let me, let me know the comments and let me know how you feel about that. But I was talking to my mom about that and I said, you know, we can look at it and say, how come nobody told her about Jesus? She wasn't around people who were talking about Jesus, you know? She may have grown in church. She did. She grew up in church. She sang in the church. But at the end of the day, somebody came in with Buddhism and show her, hey, you say these chants, you're going to find peace. You're going to get the courage to leave. And that's what happened. Okay? All right. But anyway, um, but she started to love herself. And she, started, and she woke up out of the fog of trying to please Ike and trying to be who he wanted her to be. And when she saw her, when she recognized who she was and her worth for the first time, she got courage to leave. That last time he, he beat her up and she fought back in that limousine when she had that white uh, pantsuit on was the final straw. And sometimes it takes that. <laughs> sometimes it takes you giving that other person what they gave back to you. And I know that's against all the Bible. You know, revenge is mine, said Lord. But let me tell you something. Sometimes people need to know what they did to you and what they're doing to you. You may not have to do it back to them, but you can let them know, hey, look, you're going to stop doing this to me. I'm not going to take it. Okay? Either you're going to love me right or you're going to love me from afar. Because I'm not going to be here for you to keep giving me this abuse. Whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, any kind of abuse. So she found herself. She got her. She looked at herself. She found herself and she left. Okay? Learn from that, y'all. Learn from that. Then the other love, the love of music, caused her to continue to pursue her dreams. So she still loved music. Even though when she was in the music world, the music environment, and the person who was abusing her um, she first met because of music, she didn't allow that experience to stop her from pursuing her dreams for representing herself to the world as who Tina Turner really was and not who Ike Turner wanted everybody to know who Tina Turner was, okay? She kept pursuing her dreams, like I told you. At 44, at 44, at 44, she represented herself. She was, she finally, someone finally said, hey, I'm gonna help you get back, get back on top. We're not gonna let what you went through keep you down. People are going to know your story. People are going to know who you are again. And you're going to help people and make people smile again and make people dance and through your music. And that's what happened. The other love, okay, the love of her fans helped her to realize how important her story was to the healing and the wake-up call for women around the world. So if you watch the documentary, you will find out a lot of aha moments and the aha moment i found out was tina turner did not want to do the movie what's love got to do with it she did not want to be a part of it she didn't even want to see it <laughs> it 
if you seen the face on Angela Bass, <laughs> the expression on Angela Bass's face, on Angela Bass's face, come on, Sierra, get your words together. At in the documentary, they're at this uh, a press conference, the table of people is Tina and everybody else, and also Angela Bassett. And they asked Tina, you know, what did she thought? What did she think of the movie? And she said, I didn't even watch that movie. She didn't want to watch the movie. She didn't even want to do the book. See, she did the book because she wanted to silence her critics. Um, every time she would go and do an interview. Ike was still there. Even though she was no longer married to Ike, even though they were divorced, she hadn't talked to him, she hadn't seen him, didn't want nothing to do with him. Every time she did an interview during her re uh, representing herself to the world, um, her comeback, if you will, uh, she uh, she still had to keep answering questions about Ike. Well, how's Ike? What, what do you think Ike thinks about this? Um, you know... And she was like, I don't, I ain't for that. I'm not here to talk about, like, I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about the music. And so they came to her and they said, hey, let's just do a book. Put everything that happened in the book. And then we're going to silence the critics. We're going to silence the journalists. They're going to know the information. And then that'd be it. And then nobody else will need to ask you anymore about what happened because they already know. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> I wouldn't say it backfired on her, but uh, the book was supposed to silence her critics but instead it voiced the victims of domestic abuse and domestic violence and so that goes to show you that even though we may have a plan to make our lives comfortable god will use that plan to help somebody else that way we can then see that how our story how the pain of our story helps other people there is power in your story there is power in her story she didn't want to do it because that was very traumatic for her. He raped her with a wire hanger. Do you think that she wants to go through living that story again or talking about that again? Absolutely not. And I don't blame her. But because she went through with it, because she went ahead to the book, it was able to touch other women and other men who are being abused by the people in their family or their spouses to walk away from those situations, to know that they were not alone, to get the courage to speak out on the people who were abusing them. And, and that's a powerful. There is a power in your story. There is power in your journey. And you have to lead with your story, lead with your life story, lead with your testimony. Your testimonies and your stories are to Okay, so something happened with my video. It stopped recording, um, but I'm keeping it moving. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing, uh, I press pop, I, I'm recording again on the video. I'm gonna put it together. I'm gonna edit it together somehow. <laughs> um, I'm gonna figure it out. As God is my witness through Jesus Christ, I'm gonna figure this out. So anyway, like I was saying, you know, you know, you not today, Satan. I am gonna say that. So let's get churchy on that one. Not today, Satan. I have something to say. I'm going to say it. Okay. Okay. So like I said, um, there is power in your testimony. There is power in your story and your stories and your testimony are to help and encourage people and to give hope and also to ring an alarm for people. Um, your story can wake somebody up and say, Hey, wait a minute. I'm going through that. I need to get, I need to get out of that situation. Or I need to stop doing that. Or I need to do better or anything, whatever your story is. It's going to help somebody, it's going to encourage somebody, and it's going to be a wake-up call for someone to make a change in their life, okay? So, um, so the question is, what love got to do with it? What does love have to do with it? I got to stand up. My foot don't went, my foot don't went off! <laughs> Sitting on this day going... Oh my God, my foot has gone numb. Sitting on this bar stool i don't know what i did but i'm standing up now <laughs> excuse me but the question is what's love got to do with it what's love got to do with it um 
I've been telling you the truth. I used to laugh at this movie. I was six, like I said, I was I was 11. I was nine when the song came out and I was 11 when the movie came out. And while, while I was writing my notes for this podcast today and doing my research, I learned that <clears throat> I was all wrong when it came to this, um, this movie, uh, this song, perhaps, this song. Um, if you read the lyrics to What's Love Got to Do With It, and I say everything because there's love in everything. Um, I'm sorry. It's not love and everything, but you can find love, and love is a driving force to how we respond and act towards others, okay? So, um, I was listening to lyrics. So, you know, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do, got to do with it? And one of her, um, it says, it's just a secondhand emotion. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, you ever sing a song? And you're singing the lyrics and you go, well, what does that mean? So I Googled it. You know, what is secondhand emotion? What does that actually mean? So secondhand emotion from billbow.home.blog. I'm, I'm serious. That's what it says. <laughs> it's B-I-L-B-A-O dot home dot blog. It's a blog that I found. And it said that secondhand emotion is basically a feeling, feeling something based on how you see others feel it in a situation. So in the song, she's saying that love is just a secondhand emotion. Basically, love is not what I'm feeling. Love is something that I saw others feel. As an example, um, movies, in the blog, it said that movies... Um, movies and tv shows and songs they all tell us that oh when well, you know when you meet somebody and you love them you're gonna feel butterflies in your stomach but you don't really so when you do meet that person you go oh is this butterflies like no that's a red flag that's the holy spirit telling you to back away <laughs> but um but seriously um it's a secondhand emotion and secondhand emotions are we view things through the eyes and experiences of other people. Another example of that is I, um, if you remember Kings of Comedy with um, D.L. Hughley, Sedge the Entertainer, Bernie Mac, and Steve Harvey. There was a song by Lenny Williams. I don't know if y'all know, um, girl, you know I, 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 I love you. I've never heard that song before up until that point. And that came out in the 90s, I think, late 90s. Not the song, the comedy show movie came out in the late 90s and I never heard the song by Lemmy Williams before because I, I love him and then when Steve Harvey was reminiscing about the song and I saw how it made him feel it made him all warm and fuzzy and it took him back and he was in his thing and he was feeling it the next time I heard that song outside of that movie I then started feeling it all warm and fuzzy but I wasn't going through what that song was going through it was a man telling his woman look I love you we going through these things but I love you I ain't going nowhere I wasn't experiencing any of that but because I saw how Steve Harvey responded to that song and how it made him feel when I listen to it now, I think of Steve Harvey. When I listen to it now, I'm like, oh, I love you. I'm like, oh, yeah. But what am I all yelling about? Because I wasn't going through that. And I know they may not sound right, but <laughs> but, your peop but your perspective can be influenced by the experience of others. So I had an aha moment with this, uh, with this song, What's Love Got to Do With It? How, Tier? How do you say? This song... I thought this song, What's Love Got to Do With It, meant was a song connected to the movie. The, the movie was about, yes, it was about Tina um, rising up from the ashes of the abuse and all the bad stuff that she went through with Ike. But the movie also had so much abuse and violence in it from a man to a woman and from 
the betrayal of her mother and the betrayal of the background singers and all the people around them that was not, she didn't have anybody to protect her. So because every time I show love to her was through physical abuse, I thought that's what the song was about. Because the lyrics say, um, you must understand that the touch of your hand makes my pulse react. And to me, I'm thinking that's a negative thing. You know, make my pulse react. Like, you ever say, like, oh, I don't even want them to touch me. Like, don't even touch me. You know, oh, I don't even want you to touch me. That's how I thought that song meant. Like, I don't even, like, what's love got to do with it? You tell me you love me, but what does that have to do with you abusing me and hurting me and, and cheating on me and, you know, and raping me and, and, and being controlling and obsessive and, and all of these things? What, what does love got to do with that? That's what I thought this song was about. But let me tell y'all something. I had a come to Jesus aha moment today <laughs> because that's not what the song meant. The song meant, the song is about, and I got this information from Song Meanings and Facts by an uh, article by Amanda London. And she said, yes, Super Mario 3 World mm -hmm. and Bowser Fury. Okay, I'm recording. Because they're free, they're, they're, two, they're two games you can play. Okay, can 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 I finish recording? Can I, can I finish recording? Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> my podcast audience, my audio audience, you didn't hear my son coming here talking to me about what he's watching on YouTube, but my video audience heard all that, and I didn't even pause it because it's life. It is what it is. Okay. Anyway, so anyway, so the song, the song, what it really meant, like I said, it was from song meanings and facts song meanings and facts um that dot com and it's a lady named amanda london wrote an article about the real meaning of this song and she said the meaning of the song was about um a woman not wanting to be vulnerable with a man because of the heart of the experience of being heartbroken before that's why she says you must understand that a touch of your hand makes my pulse react in a good way. Like, oh, he's touching me. Oh, like I feel something. Oh, I feel something. Um, and then she goes on to say, it's logical and it's just physical. It doesn't mean more than that. What's love got to do with it? And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> This song is not a song about, about not wanting to feel the touch of a man who's been abusing you. This song is about a woman who's experiencing a, the newness and these emotions and these feelings from a man where she's trying to make it only physical and logical. And she's saying, what's love, what's love got to do with that? Like, what's love got to do with me wanting to see you and me wanting to experience you and have a good time? This ain't love. But she's like, she's running away from the vulnerability of it. She doesn't want to be vulnerable with him because of the, because she was heartbroken before. Like what? That's what it, and like, a, and so that is, that shows you how the way you respond, the emotion you respond to certain things can be a secondhand emotion. That's why she said, what's love got to do with it? It's a secondhand emotion, meaning I'm feeling this. I, my pulse is react even in, even in the verse she says that um oh gosh dang it she says something like um there's a there's a name for this I read about it there's a phrase for this meaning that someone has told her that if if you when somebody touches you when and when you react in this way with this quote unquote this feeling you getting when someone touches you in a good way this got to be love and she's saying, no, what's love got to do with it? It's just physical. It's just, this is logical. I'm just hanging out with you. So what does love have to do with it? I'm thinking like, the whole time I'm thinking that she's talking about Ike touching her. <laughs> Even though she didn't write the song, it was written for her. But they had it sync up with the movie. So because they linked it to the movie years later, I'm thinking... What's love got to do with it? Don't touch me. Like, what does love have to do with you abusing me? With you manipulating me? <clears throat> with you hurting me? 
And she's saying, what's love got to do with me hanging out with you? <laughs> what does love have to do with me holding your hand? Or what does love have to do with anything? This is, a, this is not love. This is just uh, me having a good time. So that's... <laughs> That is that that was my aha moment. But it, but as I digress, <laughs> what does love have to do with it? It has everything to do with it, okay? Maybe not in that sense. My mind is blown because I'm like, what? And you're like probably like what? But love is not hate, okay? Love is not abuse, it's not physical abuse, it's not verbal abuse, it's not manipulation, it's not infidelity, it's not pain, and it's not hurt. It's not staying when you need to leave. It is not control. It is not obsession. It is not someone making you feel inferior because of their status and where they are. It is none of those things. Love is what? It's uplifting. It's encouraging. It's inspiring. It's healing. I said love heals all wounds. And it's what it says in, in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. It's patient. It's kind. It's not envious. It's not boastful. It keeps no record of wrongs. And I think that sometimes, based on what I thought um, and what I still think now, that sometimes we can run away from love because of how we were uh, loved by someone else. Um and I think that love has everything to do with how we treat other people, how we love on other people, how we um, experience other people. Um, it has everything to do with how we live. And when you're absent of love, it can cause you to be um, lost. It can cause you to hurt people. It can cause you to wreak havoc on yourself. And those around you it can cause you to question what does love have to do with anything because you feel absent of love but I come to tell you today <laughs> this is gonna sound churchy but God's love is important his love heals all wounds his love heals all hurt his love heals all pain his love will Holds you like a warm blanket. I know that's kind of cliche, but it will. On those lonely nights when you feel like, you know, why am I still single? Why did this person leave me? Um, why have I not um, fulfilled my purpose? It will, um, it will show you. I'm sorry, is that a bug? I'm sorry. It will show you. I have ADD. It will show, he will show you. God's love will show you that I can come in and I can give you peace and I can love you like nobody else. They hurt you, I can love you better. They accuse you of wrongdoings, I can love you better. They, um, they talked about you, they betrayed you, I can love you better than that. There was a post that um, went up and I, post, I reposted it and, and someone said, you know, trying to heal, trying to give love, trying to be loved, trying to chase your dreams. And you're just trying to do all these things as a human being. And um, and basically you're tired. At the end of the day, you're tired. And God said, and all of that that you're trying to do, you're trying to heal, you're trying to trying to heal, trying to be a friend, trying to be a, a, a father, a mother, a co-worker, an employer, a confidant. You're trying to um, chase your dreams and, and live a different life. You're trying to be different from your family because they were toxic. All these things going on, God says, give it to me and I can take it. And I can, I can be, I, I can be all that for you. I can heal you. I can love you. I can help you with your dreams. I can help you with um, how to love other people and how to love yourself. So what does love have to do with it? It has everything to do with it because God is love. And God wants to have everything to do with your life. Okay, I'm back around. I'm bringing it back around. It has everything to do with your life. And I'm glad I saw the documentary because I used to laugh at that movie because of the way that Lawrence Fishburne um, played Ike. I didn't laugh at the abuse. I laughed at the nuances and the way that, like I said, Lawrence Fishburne played Ike Turner. 
it, you know, just some of the things that he would say was, was comical. And that's what we do sometimes, especially in the black community. We take pain and we turn it into laughter so that we can help heal. Um, but sometimes that laughter, sometimes it can, it can suffocate the pain so much that you don't heal from it and you forget about the pain. And then one day when someone comes and snatches that bandaid off and you're no longer laughing and you realize you're not healed yet. So now that I look at this movie, the next time I watch this movie, and when I think of it now, I am, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sad for her. I am not for her now, but I'm sad for the, for the, for the pain that she had to endure as a teenager, as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, because people betrayed her. Her mother betrayed her. Her husband betrayed her. The people in her band betrayed her. And um, she had to go through a lot. And I understood why she didn't want to do the movie. I understand why she didn't want to talk about it. Because no one knows what you know because you went through it. They didn't go through it. And so it's easy for somebody to say, tell me, tell me. And you're like, wait a minute, I haven't healed from that yet. And even though it was 1991, 1993, she had not healed from what happened all those years ago. And she had to heal first. And I'm glad in the documentary, she, she showed that she had healed from it. And now she's off in Switzerland living her life. And she's married and she's happy. She lost her son, but she's still going. She went through pain and abuse, but she's still going. And her life is a testimony and a story to how we can still get up and we can still chase our streams and we can still pursue the life that God has given us. And we can still do what we're supposed to do, even though we've gone through the hurt, even though we've gone through the pain, even though life feels like it's never going to get better. We still can push through because God's love is with us and he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to go through the ridicule, the betrayal, the naysayers, the, um, being lied on and being hung on a tree to die for us. That's how much God loved us. So what's love got to do with it? Everything. God has everything to do with it because he loves you enough to pull you out of it, to pull you from your darkness, to pull you from your pain, to love you through it, and to continue to love you when, you're, when you are at a better place. Okay? Oh. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Talking Up with Tierra Monique. Uh, we're coming to a close. <laughs> um, I hope that when you watch this documentary, you watch it differently. Um, I hope the next time you watch what's love got to do with it, not that you don't watch it for entertainment purposes. That you watch it to get a lesson and to learn something from it. And... Um, yes, you may be entertained by some parts of the, of the movie because some parts were entertaining as far as like, you know, the singing and the dancing and all that good stuff, but also learn something from it because it helped me. It, I, I cried when I watched that documentary and now, um, I have a better love for Tina Turner. I have a better love for people who go through things I've never gone through. I don't ever want to go through anything that she's went through and I don't want any woman or man child boy or girl to ever go through any kind of physical abuse like that you know god will use your trauma and your pain your story your trauma pain story to heal someone else he'll heal you through it and while you're healing he's gonna heal somebody else because you're gonna be telling people about your story okay okay all right so my podcast quote of the day is how we love let me take that back. What, I can't even read my stuff today. <laughs> How we love is... What in the world did I say? Oh, how we were loved is shown in how we love others. What is wrong with me? Is it 39? Is it because I'm 39? <laughs> but how we were loved is how we show it to other people. So that just basically means um, we were loved. Some of us were loved toxic in a toxic way. And some, were some of us were loved in a non-toxic way. And because of that, that's how we end up loving other people. And so you just got to ask God, God, help me to love myself and love other people in a way that is positive and not negative. Help me not to love people the way my family loved me, my mom, my dad loved me, if it was in a negative way. Help me to love them differently. 
and recognize it that this is not love. Like I said, love is, is not is is not pain. Love is not hurt and it's not pain. <clears throat> you shouldn't have arguments every day with your spouse or your loved one or your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and, and call it and call it love. That's not love. Lo love is not trying to hurt you. Okay? Okay. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. Um I hope you uh were able to um get a good message from this today i hope you were able to learn from it today and thank you so much for joining me today <laughs> through all of this when i when i upload this it's going to be good 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 i have something else um my uh i found an old uh fortune cookie thing and it says most of us have far more courage than we ever dreamed we possessed hmm. it's very fitting today right she had more courage than she thought she ever possess we have more courage than we think that we ever possess okay okay so thank you for joining me today you can listen to me on um uh anchor.fm apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, and spotify you can reach me at talk it up with tiara monique um on my instagram and facebook you can reach me at talk it up with tiara monique at gmail.com that's talk it up with tiara monique <laughs> at gmail.com and you can read go to my website of uh, everything tiara monique where you can find out more stuff about me you can also find the links to the podcast and they'll take you right to um the uh, anchor.fm to listen okay okay tell a friend tell us tell a sister tell a brother tell a mother tell your father <laughs> tell an enemy okay come and join to come and join us and, um, and let's get healed and let's move on and let's help other people to live their best lives okay okay it's time um hope to see you again welcome oh <laughs> i'm so nervous um don't forget seek god first and all you do matthew 6 33 um love god love yourself be kind to yourself be kind to other people and until next time god bless you and smooches bye